nucleotide degradation now this purine nucleotides can be sequentially degraded by removal or alteration of the portions of nucleotide okay the portions of nucleotide are either removed or they are altered and that is how you sequentially degrade the purine nucleotide now the end product of the purine catabolism in case of humans is uric acid okay uric acid is the end product when you catalyze purines in human beings now in mam mammals there is oxidation of uric acid into alanine alantoin okay when you oxidize uric acid it forms alantoin and this take place in case of mammals other than primates now in some animals other than mammals this alantoin or uric acid okay can be even degraded to urea and up to ammonia the uric acid is degraded up to urea or even ammonia in case of some animals other than mammals in case of mammals it is oxidized up to alantoin now in case of human beings uric acid is the final product of purine degradation when you degrade when you degrade purine in your body uric acid is produced and this uric acid is then excreted into urine now let's see how the production of uric acid happens step by step now in the first step the amino group is removed from the amp okay from the amp amino group is removed now this thing that is removal of amino group from amp produces your imp okay so at the in the first step there is production of imp by removal of amino group from the amp that is inosine now the in the second step the imp or gmp are converted into their nucleoside forms that is inosine or guanosine okay imp produced in the previous step is converted into inosine okay inosine is the nucleoside form of the imp and guanosine is the nucleoside form of the gmp so this nucleoside forms that is inosine and guanosine are produced at the end of the second step during the production of uric acid that is nucleotide degradation now in the third step this inosine and guanosine produced in the previous steps are converted into their respective purine bases such as hypoxanthine and guanine respectively okay inosine is converted into hypoxanthine and guanosine is converted into guanine okay guanine is the uh, respective purine base of guanosine and hypoxanthine is the purine base of the inosine so at the end of the third step there is formation of hypoxanthine and guanine now in the fourth step the guanine is deaminated de and deamination of guanine produces xanthine okay so at the end of the fourth step there is production of xanthine okay guanine produced here is deaminated and you get xanthine now in the fifth step the hypoxanthine is oxidized by this enzyme xanthine oxidase okay xanthine oxidase oxidizes hypoxanthine now this oxidation of hypoxanthine results in the formation of xanthine and this xanthine is again then further oxidized to form uric acid which is the final product of the human purine degradation okay human purine degradation produces xanthine as its final product and then this uric acid a uh, uric acid is produced as the final product of human purine degradation and then this uric acid is excreted in the urine okay so in fifth step the hypoxanthine is oxidized to xanthine and the xanthine then is oxidized to form uric acid so let's look at an overview of the degradation of purine nucleotides to uric acid so you start with amp 
and then that AMP is converted into adenosine and that adenosine is then converted into inosine or this AMP is converted into IMP and then IMP gives inosine. So that is how the inosine formation takes place from the AMP via these two forms. Now then this inosine is converted into hypoxanthin and then that hypoxanthin is converted into xanthin. So this is how the degradation of AMP takes place up to xanthin. Now let's look up out GMP. Okay. Now the GMP is converted into inosine and then that inosine is converted into guanine and then that guanine gives you xanthin. Okay, so from AMP, this is how you reach up to xanthin and from GMP, this is how you reach up to xanthin. And then finally, this xanthin in the form, uh, in, the, in the presence of xanthine oxidase gives uric acid. Okay, so that is how these purines that is AMP and GMP are degraded into uric acid. Both of them come up to xanthin and then xanthin is degraded into uric acid. Now let's read about adenosine deaminase deficiency. Now this adenosine deaminase deficiency that is the deficiency, deficiency of this enzyme leads to this condition that is severe combined immunodeficiency. Okay, this ADA is uh, abbreviation of adenos, adenoside deaminase deficiency. Which, re which results into SCID that is severe combined immunodeficiency. Now in this SCIP, T and B lymphocytes do not develop properly. Okay, the development of T and B lymphocyte does not take place properly in this uh, condition which is referred to as SCIP, SCID and which results because of adenosine deaminase deficiency. Now the lack of this ADA that is adenosine deaminase leads to the increase in the cellular concentration of deoxy ATP. Okay, why deoxy ATP concentration in the cell increases? Because this enzyme is lacking that is adenosine deaminase enzyme. The, 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 the enzyme which causes the deamination of adenosine that is not present in proper concentration and that is the reason why this cellular concentration of DATP is increasing. Now this DATP act as a strong inhibitor of ribonucleotide reductase. Okay, ribonucleotide reductase is strongly inhibited by deoxy ATP. Now high levels of ATP produces a general deficiency of other DNTPs in the T lymphocytes. In T lymphocytes there is deficiency of other deoxynucleotide triphosphates because of this high level of deoxy ATP. There is another uh, condition which is known as GOAT which is related with the metabolism of the nucleotide. Now let's look at that. Now in case of human beings, the final product of purine degradation is excreted into urine that is uric acid. In your body, there is degradation of the purine which leads to the formation of uric acid and you excrete that uric acid through urine. That is what is happening in human beings, us. Now high serum levels of urate leads to gout, okay, it induces gout, high serum levels of urate. So during this disease, gout, there is pre precipitation of sodium urate crystals and that causes the inflammation of the joints. Now this drug allopurin, so drug allopurinol is the treatment for the goat okay if an individual is having this condition goat then that individual is supposed to take drug allopurinol now the structure of this allopurinol is similar to xanthin 
okay xanthine and allopurinol have a similar structure and that is the reason why this purinol inhibit xanthine oxidase okay this enzyme is inhibited by allopurinol because its structure is similar to xanthine now this xanthine oxidase is a molybdenum and iron containing flavoprotein and this xanthine oxidase oxidizes hypoxanthine into xanthine and then the oxidation of xanthine leads to the formation of uric acid and that is the reason why if you inhibit this enzyme xanthine oxidase then there will be no formation of uric acid and there will be no precipitation of sodium urate crystals and that is how you can avoid the gout okay by inhibiting the xanthine oxidase now let's read about lech nyhan syndrome now this is a genetic disorder which is caused by the deficiency of an salvage enzyme of the salvage enzyme known as hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase which is abbreviated as hgprt if is there if there is deficiency of this salvage enzyme then this syndrome happens which is a genetic disorder now the biochemical biochemical consequence of the virtual absence of this hgprt enzyme is the elevated concentration of prpp if there this hgprt enzyme is not present in the system then the concentration of prpp will increase now the increased concentration of prpp will increase the de novo purine synthesis okay purine synthesis by de novo pathway will increase and this will result in the overproduction of urate and overproduction of urate is not a good thing we just saw okay so hgprt will eventually lead to overproduction of the urate now children with deficiency of this hgprt shows or displays the compulsive cell destructive behavior okay in a children if you are observing a self destructive behavior then maybe the reason behind that is the deficiency of this hgprt enzyme because in that children uh, the concentration of urate increases and that leads to this self destructive behavior okay now this deficiency of hgprt also leads to mental retardation okay so self destructive behavior and mental retardation these two are the symptoms of that uh, uh, lesh nyhan syndrome which is occurring because of the deficiency of this hgprt now as the hgprt is less the salvage pathway is not taking place okay de novo pathway is taking place there, therefore there is less salvaging of the bases and because of this there is more production of uric acid okay if you are not salvaging the bases bases are not reused and the ammonia of that bases then produces uric acid okay so that is the reason why this less salvaging of bases leads to gout that is inflammation of the joints by the precipitation of sodium urate crystals that is gout now let's read about degradation of pyrimidine nucleotides now the thing is that in human cells the purine rings are not cleaved okay in human cells the purine rings the cleavage of purine ring is not taking place but in human cells the pyrimidine ring can be opened can be cleaved and can be degraded into water soluble, soluble structures such as beta amino isobutyrate or beta alanine okay these water soluble structures can be formed by the degradation of pyrimidine ring in the human cell but human cell in human cell purine rings are not cleaved and are not degraded so now let's look how the catabolism of pyrimidine happens let's look at a flow chart so cytosine is a pyrimidine so cytosine is converted into uracil 
okay first and then that uracil is converted into dihydrouracil and then that dihydrouracil is converted into n carbamoyl beta alanine and then this n carbamoyl beta alanine is converted into beta alanine okay so that is how the cytosine is converted into a water soluble structure known as beta alanine now let's see what happens is in case of thymine well thymine is converted into dihydrothymine and then this dihydrothymine is converted into n carbamoyl beta amino isobutyrate and then this n carbamoyl beta amino isobutyrate butyrate is converted into beta amino isobutyrate which is also a water soluble structure okay so that is how the pyrimidines are converted into water soluble structures and that is how the catabolism of the pyrimidines takes place